Aravali hills of Haryana are the last remaining virgin forests of the national capital region that make them prime real estate today. Citizens of Gurgaon and Faridabad have been fighting along with locals to protect these eco-sensitive hills from being eaten up by real estate interests. But it looks increasingly difficult and like a losing battle thanks to silent policy maneuvers by the government. Vasudha Sharma reports what's really going on there. The Aravalis of Haryana are fighting for survival. Haryana's forest cover is the second lowest in India. And yet it continues to look the other way when its last patch of Aravali forests are fast getting sliced up for real estate. Locals who call these Aravali ranges of Gurgaon and Faridabad their home for generations reveal how their village common lands have become a booming market for farmhouses. Businessman जो lobby है, वो यहाँ पे हावी हो गई है और वो हर तरीके से अपने तरीके से जो चाहे वो मैं ये नहीं कह रहा हूँ यहाँ पे क्या है हमाम में सभी नंगे हैं वाली कहावत है यहाँ पे politician भी है यहाँ पे NGO sector भी है यहाँ पे private लोग भी हैं government sector भी है ये जो बाबू लोग हैं Few kilometers from Delhi, just off the Gurgaon Faridabad Expressway, the Mangarbani Grove, sacred to locals here, is on the radar of both Haryana's town planners and private companies with land holdings here. What you see behind me is an under construction hotel which locals say belongs to a political family. At various places in this Mangarbani, you can see gated farmhouses and demarcated plots belonging to private companies waiting to go public when the laws turn in their favour. Change of land use, fencing of land and construction activities continue without a check, all taking advantage of the fact that the Aravalis are still not labelled as forests by Haryana. From the 16th to Sariska, Rajasthan, there is one belt, there is a wildlife corridor. They have done it in the Delhi government and they have prepared the 16th wildlife century. But Haryana has not played their part. The revenue record is still on the record is the forest. उसे तो ये फॉरेस्ट की डेफिनेशन दे रहे हैं मगर जो नहीं है और जो जंगल आगे डेवलप हो गया उसे ये कह रहे हैं कि वो फॉरेस्ट की नहीं है जो डेफिनेशन होती है तो फॉरेस्ट की डेफिनेशन है तो वो स्टार्ट होती है फॉरेस्ट इंक्लूड्स तो वो एक इंक्लूसिव डेफिनेशन है तो उसको बढ़ाने का एक स्कोप है द नेल इन द कॉफिन विल कम फ्रॉम वॉट इज ट्रांसपायरिंग एट द सेंटर द इन्वायरमेंट मिनिस्ट्री इज री राइटिंग द फॉरेस्ट कॉन्जर्वेशन एक्ट टू इंट्रोड्यूस अ न्यू डेफिनेशन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट the draft proposal says that only areas notified as forests and those with a dense tree canopy will be classified as forests. Environmentalists say this opens up the Aravali ranges for commercial use because its natural dry canopy in Haryana's semi-arid climate will never meet the centre's new definition. The other policy manipulation that the Haryana government is playing in the background is in its sub-regional plan. Even as it designates the Aravali Ranges a natural conservation zone, it dilutes it with this oxymoron. Aravalis falling in the urbanizable areas are to be excluded. Environmentalists who have been studying Haryana's Aravali forests say the clock has begun ticking, with most of the natural water channels having vanished. We are ringing our death knell. Already 42% of Delhi's children are unable to breathe properly as they should be. Do we want to make that into 84% very soon? For whom are we buying these commercial buildings, if not for our children? Do we want to starve them of air and oxygen in order to leave them a legacy of a building? Economy cannot succeed without ecology. And in a chain reaction of events, sooner or later, losing the Aravalis will spell a weather and water crisis for Delhi NCR. With camera person AJ Joseph, Vasudha Sharma, NDTV. Without the Aravalis, forest cover will just be 0.5% in Haryana. This is a shocking fact. With me today, Ritwik Datta, environment lawyer and Colonel, retired SSO, Broy, RTI activist. Gentlemen, thank you very much. You know, you look at a story like this and it totally shakes you up. Uh, the, the last statement, Ritwik Datta, is so amazing and sums it all up. I mean, we are destroying the ecology for who? I think uh, if you look at it in very clear terms, what is today happening is, is a sorry state of affairs where in 1996 the Supreme Court made it very clear that the word forest must be understood in terms of its dictionary meaning. So the very fact that whether it is notified or not notified, it is a forest. Mm -hmm. it, is a, it is a tropical dry deciduous forest. It is scrub. 
it cannot be equal to a Western Ghats forest in terms of density. But okay. anyone who visits the area will know that it is a forest. Right. And to use it for any other purpose than to conserve it is, is not only illegal, it is actually unconstitutional. But Ritwik Datta, I understand the dense canopy part. That I think is very, very silly. But there is another argument that, you know, there is a certain uh, part which has already been termed as a forest. And then there is a part which is over time grown and become a forest, isn't it? And that is the one which is under threat. So how do you get this new part also covered under the definition of forest? W what will it take? It doesn't really take, uh, it won't take much of effort at all. If the government is keen, the people really want it, at least those who are uh, going to be affected because of such a change in land use, mm -hmm. it only needs the government to uh, demarcate these areas. Okay. But, but even if you leave that out, as I said, the existing law in India does not really define forest. It says forest must be understood in terms of its dictionary meaning and it covers all categories of land irrespective of ownership and classification. It is impossible in a country like India to demarcate every inch of land. Okay. So therefore, if it has all the characteristics of a forest as normally understood, keeping in mind the particular location of the forest. Now, as I'm saying, you can't have a Himalayan forest in a Aravali. So, it, so therefore, it has to keep the local situation into account and therefore under that, it is a forest. You have leopards there, you have Nilgai there, mm. you have so much of biodiversity and wildlife there. Every other day, now you see a leopard dying in one of the farmhouse or the other snare, why, how does it exist? It obviously is eating, it is a vibrant ecosystem. Fair and enough. Alright, so, so then let me come to this larger question on actually both the state government and the central government trying to rework the laws which will actually allow then for land use change in that area. Uh, Colonel Obroy, what is, what is your assessment of this fact that Environment Ministry is actually reworking the Forest Conservation Act framing new guidelines and we've got Ritwik who's saying why do you need to you know demarcate it it is a forest everyone can see it and that could have probably very very terrible implications for our Aravlis isn't it see the argument that is being used by the Ministry of Environment and Forest is that there is a public forest and there is a private forest okay they are saying that public forest we can protect but what can we do about the private forest now my answer to that is that the private forest is also a forest. Now, if mm. you see, the, there is a three judges bench judgment in Samta versus state of uh, Andhra Pradesh, which is overruling all these two judge bench judgments. And that gives something called the extended meaning of forest. And by that definition, even a desert could become a forest. What mm -hmm. to talk of Aravlis? And all the right. Aravlis have been... So, so it's good. Actually, it's positive that beyond what, what has been publicly defined as forest, there's been natural vegetation growth thick mm. enough for it to be called a forest. And why tamper with that, isn't it? Now, if you read the Indian Forest Act, the Forest Act defines even the areas like Aravlis. So that definition includes the Aravlis. It's the 1927 Act. And this Act came up from the 18, 1800, 1880 Act. So therefore, the definition of forest is unchanged for the last uh, 200 years, 150 years. Mm -hmm. So the uh, government saying that private or public is trying to put a whitewash over something because private or public has already been ruled long back by the Supreme Court in all its judgments and the three judge bench judgment of the Samta. Okay. So therefore, this private and public argument will not wash. Okay. So what is happening there currently? I mean, I, I could see in the footage and the shots that there are already certain private companies which have started building hospitality or hotels there. They are waiting and bidding their time for the land use laws or for them to be able to look at some land, uh, some regulation changes and then probably go in. Ritwik Datta, what are, what are the dangers? I mean, how do you see this? If the government doesn't wake up, what could happen in this area? See, already we see a lot of private entities, whether it's individuals, very, very prominent people in the society who are buying these lands. Mm -hmm. now, now, the Forest Conservation Act, unfortunately, does not stop you from buying it if the area is under private ownership. Right. So the land has been bought in anticipation that, that if they allow or treat this as a non-forest area, tomorrow you can go around and build and come out with all the constructions that can happen. Correct. So therefore, this is basically a wait and watch approach. We already have the TSR Subramaniam committee, which is the high level committee to, for reviewing of environmental laws. It has recommended that the word forest must be understood only uh, that the word forest should be restricted only to government forest. Mm -hmm. And therefore, once the recommendation is adopted or accepted, 
immediately all areas outside reserve forest protected forest will cease to be forest and that goes contrary to the supreme court judgment itself okay. because ultimately forest is what exists naturally as a forest not because of the fact that under some law it is recognized it as a forest all that's right. what we have to keep in mind no, so, so what are the dangers? I mean, here obviously there is a fight that you're fighting, Colonel Obroy, and, and uh, I, do you think that through campaigns like change.org, you will be able to present to the government, the Haryana government should itself be worrying about it, that they shouldn't turn Haryana into a complete concrete jungle. Are, are you beginning to see some effect of it? See, there is no substitute for greed in our country. Hmm. So this is a matter of greed. And, you know, our chief minister might be well-meaning, our prime minister might be well-meaning, and they are. Okay. But the greed comes from the other levels in the government, and there are many sliding levels. So we don't want to name them, but we are aware of them, and we are working on it. And really speaking, the strategy could not be revealed, but there is a strategy in place now, we are working on it. All right. You're working on it. Last word, Ritwik Datta, in terms of what is Haryana staring at if the uh, private area, let's even forget the public area, but they only have 0.5% of green cover currently. If the private areas of Aravalis, as we worry, uh, are under threat and actually get converted into real estate, what happens? What, what should people be prepared for? Firstly, it's, it's, it's known very clearly that it will be an ecologically suicidal uh, um, uh, act and for the very water. simple reason mm -hmm. that, you know, Aravalis is actually the groundwater recharge zone for the whole of the NCR region. Right. The quartzite rock formation actually recharges billions of litres of water. It provides you fresh, clean oxygen. Right. No apartment building can provide you either of these two. And therefore, what we are now doing is, is something which is already leading to a disaster. So what we have today is a remnant of what earlier existed. And this is a state of Haryana which has forest cover way below the national average that is required. Forget about 33%. On an average, if you take 12 to 10% forest cover for the whole of country, mm -hmm. this, is a country this is a state which has less than 2% of its area under forest. It cannot lose even a single hectare of forest land in future if it has to maintain its agricultural productivity and if it has to maintain a standard of living not only for the people of Haryana but in the entire NCR region. So saving the Aravalis, which is the oldest mountain range and which is this part is the last remnant good forest cover is important not only for the state of Haryana but the whole country as a whole. Absolutely. I think we are going to rest there. Ritwik has uh, summed it up very well for us. So less than 2% of Haryana currently has green cover. If the Aravalis go, that number is going to dip to just 0.5% with concrete jungle all around. You can imagine what it will do to the future generation's lungs. I mean, what are we leaving behind for them? So for everybody to sit up and notice this and of course, join campaigns uh, which are fighting and groups which are fighting to keep the Aravalis alive. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on this discussion.